so I grew up in a family of four girls. I'm the youngest of four sisters. Um, we moved around a lot. My dad worked in um, the AFL, so uh, he was a coach. So we lived in Adelaide, we've lived in Tassie. He moved right. to Perth for a few years, so sort of always been on the go somewhere. Um, but with three older sisters, it's certainly been eventful. <laughs> yeah, my gosh. Yeah. So, because you're the, you've got, there's your older sister, then twins, yep. and then you. And then me, I call myself the mistake at the end. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do, what did Either you that say? or I was supposed to be a boy. Yeah, yeah. right. Mum swears sister, she hates it when people say that. She really does, and so does dad, because everyone goes to my dad, oh, you know, you wanted your footy boy, but, you know, he. I know, your poor dad yeah, no. being in the footy field, like yeah. footy industry. Yeah. But he loves his, you know, four four girls. That's pretty special. It's it is yeah. it is so incredible. Yeah. Um. So were you guys close growing up? Yeah, we were, and we still are. You know, obviously in that dynamic, there's going to be ups and downs, um, quite a bit, and certainly, a lot of eventful things have happened over the time. But especially having children all together in the past few years has been really good for us. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes having kids can yeah. make. It can change relationships. Everyone's grown or... up really quickly and all sort of been forced to, I suppose. And, um, yeah, that bond between sisters and now mothers is, yeah. is really nice. Yeah. Because you don't all, like, I have an older sister, but we're not hugely close. Yeah. But what brought us closer was my boys. Yeah, And absolutely. our relationship is yeah. through our boys. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and school? Yeah. Um, so I started off just at a public school and then uh, my mum wanted to send me to a private school. I actually got offered a scholarship to this school for netball. Oh, right. But because mum and dad had already had me on the waiting list, the school withdrew the scholarship because, no we, were, because we were willing to pay anyway. Oh. So that what took out the money. Uh, sort of an all-rounder, actually. Really? Yeah, a bit of a swing man. Right. So. Um, so I went to Penley and Essendon Grammar School for my VCE and it was a good move I think for me because I ended up doing quite well and better than what I think I thought I would have right. at, at another school so yeah it was a good choice. What about when growing up like are you did you experience any you know we, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, just sometimes that competitiveness with yeah. girls and yeah. and it's, it's Penley an all girls school? Well, it, it? it is until year 11 and 12 so I came into it um, when the boys are there right. and I suppose even though I've grown up with all sisters we've, we've been brought up in a sporting environment yeah. we're all really tomboys so um, I've always got along with guys so much better I always say that I actually don't like girls <laughs> I do like really? girls but I just can get along with boys like some of my best friends are all boys right um, so going into that school at that time was probably good for me I don't think I would have been you know, a good fit for an all-girls school. Oh, yeah, right. No, but you can certainly tell the girls that come from an all-girls school. Yeah, absolutely. right. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think I can still pick it today as well. Really? Yeah. What do you think I am? I don't think you're an all-girls school. No, I'm not. Yeah. My partner went, went to an all-boys school and I went to a co-ed school and he is like, he would never have got any work done if there were girls yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. now we've got two boys. We're like, well, what are we going to do in terms of school? Yeah. And he's like, I think all boys is good. And I'm yeah. like, but that's not the real world. No, I won't be doing, um, no, I'll be doing co-ed for Bobby, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so sport was huge and obviously with your yeah. dad um, yep. being involved in AFL yep. and you being a netballer. Yep. Do you reckon, because I reckon that is what keeps a lot of kids out of trouble yeah. when they're into sport. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, I sort of hit a point um, in my teenage years, I'd always played a high level of netball and then I reached um, sort of 17, 18 when, you know, I think you either go this way or you go that way. Yeah. And for a little bit of my life there, I, I went that way and that's when I sort of I gave up my netball there for a few years and I think that yeah. was a real deal breaker in whether I was going to be really successful or whether I wasn't. And right. so still to this day, that's my biggest regret of my whole life that I sort of went that way a little bit and didn't yeah. keep up the netball. Cause you know, I watch the ANZ championships now and I watch the Olympics and I see girls that I played with. Oh really? And it kills me. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. kick in the guts. So. It's so hard though, because to be really good at sport, you have to give up so much of your Yeah, and I did, I gave up so, you know, I was that girl that couldn't go anywhere cause I had yeah. netball training three nights a week as a 12 year old. Right. And that's a huge commitment, but yeah. um. On the other hand, now being a mum, I realise the sacrifice that my parents made. Yeah. You know, they've worked all day and they're still driving me an hour across town to go to netball training. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's an eye opener. Okay. Mm. I like want my boys to be in sport, but then yep. I don't want yeah. all my weekends gone. I'm like, you're not I doing can... rowing, that's I too early. No, no not swimming. Not playing golf, because I find it boring. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, they can ru they can just jog and yeah. do marathon and stuff, because they can leave the front door by yeah. themselves, run and come back. Mate, I'm like, and I said, yeah. Sam, I'm like, you. that is when you were so, 
that's your deal. Yeah. Like, I push them out. Yeah. You take them. I push them out. <laughs> yes, seriously. My job's done. Yeah. You I'm going to be that ugly parent though. Like Jared's a really calm one in our relationship, even though he's the footy player, he's a really calm, level-headed one. See, right. I've got the aggression in me. So even watching Jared's little brothers play footy the other week, I'm on the sideline, bullshit. And then I'm like, <laughs> it's under 11. It's like, stop. And Jared goes, do you know how bad you're going to be when you're on the sidelines for Bobby? I said, I won't be on the sidelines for Bobby because I'll be coach of Bobby's team. Do you <laughs> reckon? Would you do that? Yeah, do you coach yeah. his team and stuff? Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, I'd love it. What's your relationship like with your dad? Your parents are still together. Yep. Yep. What's your relationship like with your dad? Um, no, it's good with my dad. I think um, out of all of my sisters, I'm I'm the youngest, but I'm probably the most independent. So my older three sisters are really, really close with mum and dad, whether I am, but just in a different yeah. way. Yeah. So, you know, between me and my parents, it's all those unsaid things. You know, I don't need to speak to them every day. I don't need to tell them. Like, I never tell my mum and dad I love them. And Don't you? No. Have you ever? No, not really. <gasps> no. Why is that? I don't know. And I, yeah, I don't know whether they didn't do it to me. Um, look, I'm sh we love each other. Yeah, of course. But, you know, I think that's just the way we've been, you know. Do your sisters say yeah. I love you to the instead? Yeah. Oh, you're the black sheep. Yeah. I was asking you before, I'm like, out of the four of you, who is the one? Yeah. And so it it's Yeah, you. it's me. And it's not, you know, I'm not, I've never been the naughty child. If anything, that was my older sister. She threw right. the parties and she did all of that. It was good being the youngest because I saw all the mistakes they made. And yeah. I'm like, tick, don't do that, tick, don't do that. So by the time it got to me, I'd learned everything. But, um, but yeah, my relationship with my parents is certainly different, but God, it's strengthened since I've had a baby. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't Again, the eye opener. Yeah. yeah, and you also realise, because my mum was a single parent yep. and my grandparents were really involved in my life. Yep. But now having my own two boys and I go, wow, single, doing yeah. this on your own? Yeah. Like there's not one part of this that yeah. I could do on my own. No, absolutely no way. And not that my mum did it on her own, but my dad's job, throughout our whole life sort of forced him to travel a lot and as I yeah. said before he lived in Perth for three years um, while my mum stayed here so I oh, could go really? to school and do VCE. Yeah. So they did long distance from Perth? Yeah, yeah so I just see the sacrifices that my mum's made you know lots of times there my dad could be working six days a week or travelling for work and she's got four kids under seven wow. at home on her own so oh you know sometimes when I'm having a bad day with Bobby I'm like shit you know and then I go how did mum do this with four? Yeah. yeah. One of the first things that I read about you, and I actually think it was probably one of the first pieces you wrote, and yep. you sent it around to get published, and you're yeah. like, I love this so much, I need to build my own platform. Yeah. And that's when The Young Mummy came yep. about. But it was you talking about um, having polycystic ovaries, yep. which a lot of women suffer from, yep. and being told at 17 that you were not going to be possibly mm. able to have babies. Yep. What was that time like? Um, it was it was tough and a lot of people I know would read that and go oh you were 17 and still to this day my mum questions whether the doctor actually said that to me but I you know I wouldn't make something like no. that up I was I remember going in there and and the the nurse or whoever did I can't remember but she was trying to get me on my own to to ask me if I'd had sex before because I need to have oh, an internal but she didn't right. want to ask me in front of mum and anyway so we cleared that all up and she said right girl you're going to have to stand outside the room so we're doing an internal scan and we all know what that involves. And as you know, as she's still got the probe up there, she was talking about, because I could see all these black things, right. you know, on the screen. And I've just, you know, straight away I'm thinking cancer. I'm thinking yeah. some really bad things. And she said, no, Dale, they're just cysts. She goes, you know, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting pregnant, but you don't need to worry about that now. Mm. And I just, she actually said the word infertile. And it just, it was like everything stopped. And it was just the biggest kick in the guts because... Not my boyfriend at the time, but I had a really steady boyfriend then and we talked about future, but regardless, I think every woman thinks about becoming a mum one day. Yeah. And I also think growing up in a family of all girls, that's sort of all we'd talked about with, yeah. with the sisters, about all becoming mums. So um, it didn't matter that I was 17, yeah. getting told that and sort of going home and thinking my, my body's failing me, my body's not working. It was mm. really hard to, you know, get my head around it at 17. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so. And so then you, from, and uh, how many women do suffer from polycystic Yeah, ovaries? it's really common. You know, I get women write to me all the time, I've got that too and I've got this, but at 17, I, I didn't understand what it was. No. And I didn't, all I know is she's just told me I, she doesn't think I'll be able to have kids. She actually said, oh, you probably need IVF, but you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. I didn't even know what IVF was. No. And no. I'm going, what, what's going on? And so I went out the room and after we paid and blah, 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 
I told my mum and I burst into hysterics. And mum said, no, she, she wouldn't have said that to you. And I'm like, she did, look yeah, at me right yeah. now. So um, that's something that, and not many people actually know this. When I met Jared, my now husband, um, probably about a year into our relationship, um, I actually started seeing a psychologist because of the whole you know, infertile thing playing on my mind because right. I knew I wanted to have children with Jared. Yeah. At that stage, I hadn't had a period or, you know, my menstrual cycle wasn't working. It had been nearly two years at that stage. And so I needed to just speak to someone because I was really struggling internally with the fact that I've met this amazing guy who told me he wants to have kids young, mm. but I might not be able to give that to him. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so what did you because where would you even and you do if you know you want to have children from mm. a young age I did too yep. and I've got two and I want probably want another one yep. and even though I've got two if I can't have that third it will be yeah. hard I will find it really and hard and that's what I find now sort of on my page which I can understand to an extent but some women you know when I'm talking about it say oh, well you've got Bobby now you should be so thankful but when you've got that maternal yeah. urge and you know I knew I wanted another one and I already know I want another yeah. one again you know, when you've got that in your head, I don't think anything can just make that disappear. No, I agree. No. And it, like, and God, yeah, how grateful are we that yeah, we've got ours? Absolutely. But I often say, like, my partner Sam is not sure if he want if we want to have. Yeah. He wants to have another child, and I'm like, I don't feel complete. Yeah. Our family doesn't. See, feel I've complete got a girlfriend at the moment who's got um, a son, just same age as Bobby, and she's like, you know, if I never got to be pregnant again, I'd be so thankful I've got him and etc and I, I'm just the same as you I'm like I, I wouldn't I couldn't be content you know not that mm. I'm ungrateful but I'm just I'm so not finished yeah with that yeah that totally. part of my life and yeah. then but, but having that as a prospect of you not having children yeah would have been really hard to deal with yeah absolutely absolutely and like I said I met I met a young 19 year old boy who one of the first things he said to me was I want to become a young dad you know his dad had him young and he said I want the relationship with my children that I've got with my dad Right, beautiful. And meeting someone at 19 who tells you he wants to have kids with you really soon yeah, is just like, like ching well, jackpot. You guys are really different than yeah. a lot. Because like yeah. my sister is 25 yeah. and she's like, I feel like yeah. sometimes I'm like, how do you survive out there on your yeah. own? Yeah. So he's obviously like, he's yeah. obviously very mature too. Well, he's, he was born, he's, sorry, his parents had him young as well. So he grew up around adults his whole life. Right. So. He didn't get another sibling, I think, till he was nearly 10 or, okay, was, you right. know, around then. So a lot of the time it was just him. So he, he grew up really quickly. And he also, um, you met on your 20th birthday. Is we met right? the, yeah, a few days before. Yep. And right. then and the, 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 the big clubs. bang happened on the 20th birthday. You did? <laughs> and so talk me through that. How yeah, it so it was funny because I'd just broken up with an ex-boyfriend, literally like not even two weeks before. Right. And um, my girlfriend at the time was seeing this guy and she said, oh, we're going around for drinks at his house on Tuesday night or something, you know, when you didn't have full-time work no, and you just went to uni. Nice so good. And she said, come with me. And I was like, no, no, like I'm so heartbroken. I need to just stay at home. And she's yeah. like, shut up, come. And I was like, all right, I'll go. And um, anyway, I got there and it was this house full of guys, this whole house full of guys. It ended up being that we'd gone to a it was Tuesday, but we'd gone to a mad an AFL Mad Monday party. Oh my god! So we were the four, you know, whorebaggers that have turned oh up. God, you're a full footy mom. Yeah, footy whorebag. And yeah. um, but I on and I swear, Hannah Hart, and didn't know, you know. And I walked in. At least in. you don't say I didn't know about football before. Oh yeah, because you grew up with football. Yeah. Every time I see a girl, I didn't going, know anything I, about footy. It, yeah. I think bullshit because I, if yeah. you, especially if you grow up in yeah. Melbourne or where yeah. AFL is big, you know about footy. Yeah, you but know the thing you know, in my corner is that, and I say this to Jared, he doesn't take offence to it. I went in and I do know footy, so I knew quite a few of the oh, players there. Yeah. But I didn't go for any of them. I actually saw Jared, who I had no idea who he was. He was this young rookie, right. you know, he was gorgeous. He was actually dancing in the corner, backwards hat on, no top on to Biggie Smalls. Oh my God. And I went for him. So I'm like, if I wanted the footy player, I would have been going for that one over there because I know exactly who time, that is. Right? Yeah, but I, I didn't know he that. Didn't I thought know. he could have been a friend of someone's or, yeah. Right. Yeah, so we just oh hit it God, off. Oh my God, I can't believe you. I would be like a yeah. bit scared to crash a mad bun day well when I walked in I thought I won't say who it was but I just you know I'm seeing all these senior players and I'm going where are we like what's no. going on and then yeah obviously a room full of, of footy players and four girls walk in they just go oh yeah totally pounce yes. yeah I yep. would have loved that I was a footy <laughs> mole but 
I never, like, I always had a boyfriend. Yeah. And so, so we couldn't, nah, couldn't get was, in there. I would have been if I could have been. <laughs> yeah. Like, seriously. Oh, so we'd God. go out and I'd be like, oh, there's sweet yeah. place. It's so <laughs> Fucked, it's so it? common though. It's so common, but and then, then you'd like, see other girls and you go, "Oh my god!" Like you're legit. Like there's yeah. full blown girls that would hunt down AFL players. Yeah, but around that time too, because I'd broken up with the ex boyfriend and our friendship group that we were in sort of split in half, and you know the other half were going, "Oh, you're you're just a footy slut. You're doing blah blah." And I tell them, I'm like, if I was going to be a footy whore, I would have gone for that one, that one, or that one. But no, yeah. I went for the young topless guy in the corner because yeah, yeah. you know that's that's just. Yeah, what I liked. Did you have, was it, I guess because growing up with your dad, you know, there is a real stigma around AFL players. Yes. Growing up with your dad, I, get, I guess you got to see a different yeah. side. Yeah. Was there any part about you that was worried I was about? Say something. So then my sister saw a different side of a few of them. Did yeah. she? <laughs> I think oh, she'll I'm doing kill the me. coach's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you, were you, was there a part of you that was nervous about? getting in a relationship with a player? No, because, you know, we were talking about before about the girls go, I didn't know anything about football. I had a genuine interest in football. So to go out with a guy who played football was was good for me because I I really had an understanding of the game, of their schedules, because my dad had always worked in there. So it was nothing new to me. You know, and it it wasn't like, oh, flashy, I'm going out with football. I'd I'd grown up around footy clubs my whole life. So footballers Mm. weren't, you know, on pedestals for me. They were just normal people. But I do know, you know, the stigma that comes with it and and all of that. Um, But, you know, I just, I got really lucky. I've seen some, I've seen some terrible ones over my time with girlfriends that have dated boys and um, probably still are dating boys that they they shouldn't be. But um, I just got really lucky with Jared. He's just a genuine person. How long were you together before he had to move away? Um, 10, probably about a year and a half. Right. Yeah. So it was pretty serious. Yeah. Yep. And then he had to move away for sport, for yeah, football. Yeah, for footy again. He made that decision though. Um, yeah. He made that decision without me as part yeah. of it, which obviously caused a bit of, you know, a rift there for a while. Um, but it's something that he felt he needed to do and wanted to do. And it ended up being a really good decision for him career-wise because he got redrafted back into the AFL. Right. Um, but... Yeah. So he can't. So a year and a half into a relationship, he's like, I'm moving. Yeah. And so yep. that was yeah. it for you guys at that, that stage. That was it. Yeah, because I was really sort of knee deep in my studies. Um, you know, I probably wasn't ready financially or just even commitment. Well, I, I was committed, but just I wasn't at the time. In you know, we weren't in the place where I was going to move. I wasn't going to give up my life and yep. and move straight away. But he didn't want me to move. It ended up he didn't want me to move. He. He wanted that time away and he actually broke up with me just, no, he, sorry, he did the asshole thing, which I don't think I've ever forgiven him for, really, because it's probably the worst thing he's ever done to me. Right. He hasn't done many bad things to me. Yeah. But he broke up with me about two weeks after he moved over there. Oh, right. Over Skype. Oh. Yeah. yeah shit so, moved, mate. Yeah, horrible. And it just wasn't, it wasn't him and it wasn't the person, yeah. you know, Jared's a real type that, you know, if he was going to do it, he would sit down and blah, blah. So... Like I said, I don't think I've forgiven him for that. Yeah. Um, but he regretted it very quickly. And as all young boys do, or I'm going to say all men do, they come crawling back. Yeah, yeah. Um, within about 10 days, I think, he came crawling back. And I just sort of, I don't know, I, I saw it from a different, a different side. I thought, no, you've done this for a reason because you want to do it. And I said, and I understand the reasons why you've done that. You're 20 years old. Um, we're going to be living in different states and I understand, you know, I'm not naive to the fact that 20 year old boys need to do what 20 year old boys need to do. Yeah. And at That's the same... pretty level headed as a 20, yeah. 20 or 21 yeah. year old Yeah, and girl. I had I girlfriends that. at the time that just, how can you do this? And even my family, like my family knew our situation and they were just so confused. They're like, how are you doing this? But I knew it would benefit us in the long term. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no, I wasn't going to force someone to be with me out of guilt. Mm. I loved him 100%. And I actually knew he loved me too. He yeah. was doing something that he sort of thought he had to do. Right, yeah. Or he didn't want to get over there and do something that he knew was going to hurt me. Um, so, yeah, I sort of just let him go. And he fought and fought and fought wanting to get back together. And I said, no, let's just, let's just sort of meet halfway and... Um, let's just find the balance that's going to work for us best. And that ended up being basically that we were together when we were together, but then when we weren't, we weren't. Yeah, right. Which is incredible that you 
could do that. Yeah. Because a lot of people couldn't. And I look back at it now and I think, yeah, like I, I think we were really smart about it and we were yeah. really mature about it. Um, God, yeah. Because you also would have had judgment going, okay, so when oh, we're together, absolutely. we're together. So essentially you were still kind of boyfriend and girlfriend, but you had yep. your freedom when yeah. you were together. Yeah, so when I flew home from Adelaide, I'm sure Jared went out with his footy boys and did whatever he wanted to do. And as soon as I landed back at Melbourne, I'd call the girls and say, right, where are we going out? And you actually uh, had the best of both worlds, but that is yeah. a massive mindfuck. Yeah, but it wasn't a mindfuck. For, I don't know why. I don't know if I'm missing something in my brain. Like, I don't know if I've got a chemical imbalance with things like that, but I'm just so... I look at it this way. Like, he was a young boy. Young boys want to have sex with people. Yeah. And I kind of think I'm a bit of a boy in that way too because I'm like, I'm 20. I want to have sex with people too. Yeah. So, you know, why are we going to force something? And I, I've seen so many relationships with people our age that they just fight and fight and fight to make them work and I just think why are you putting so much effort into something that's just a shit heap yeah, really yeah. and I didn't want me and Jared to turn into a shit heap right so we did you know I didn't do it for him I did it for me as well I had the yeah. best year of my life yeah wow you know there were obviously some times that were tough and that you know we, the one rule we made for the whole year was we will not ask each other any questions and wow, still did that, was that fine yeah, by you completely fine because as much as I didn't want to ask him anything, I didn't want him to ask me anything yeah, either. Yeah, wow. Still to this day. There's only one thing we've talked about, and it was because he said to me, um, when he was playing at Carlton, there was a guy there whose sister had slept with a, a boy that got drafted. Right. He said, I never want to be that guy that doesn't know that yes. someone slept with you in the past. Yeah, right, I never right, want right. to be that person. So in that year, Oh, you did. A little relationship was made and then Jared ended up playing footy with him the year later. So I was up front and I said, I know we had this rule, but you told me that you never want to know. And he went, oh, he's a really nice guy. Oh, good choice. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I'm pretty sure he said, oh, he's a legend. And I was that like, so yeah, funny. he is a bit. Yeah. Did you, did you have moments of you would have to be extremely secure in yourself? Yeah. And he would have to be extremely yep. secure too. Yeah. Did you have moments where it felt like it wasn't working for you? Would you just readjust and... Never. Like it honestly felt so fine. And that's where when we'd get the judgment, not judgment, but we'd get just, you know, I'd get girlfriends just going, how are you doing this? How are you yeah. okay with him doing that? And I'm like, because I'm doing it too. Yeah. And because I actually don't know what he's doing. That's why it was working too. Right. Because... He could have been with a hundred girls, he could have been with one, and I still don't know. Yeah, right, right, And right. that's why it's fine, because it's just, you know, what you don't know can't hurt you, yeah. and I, was, I still don't know. And that's, you know, some people go, oh, how can you build a relationship around that? Well, that's what worked for us, and that's yeah. the beauty that every relationship can be so different. Well, and there wasn't any trust broken. No. And that's what the best thing is, because if yeah. you had both of... And you're very honest saying you're a sexual person yep. and he is too, and if you were not together, yep. something could have happened where trust was broken. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm put my life on it that it would have happened. Yeah. And I don't know which party it would have been, but it 100% would have. And I think that's where some people are naive to think that might not happen. You know, it's just a, it's a natural part of being a human being. Mm, yeah. Um, and that's why we were just so honest and upfront about the situation. We'll both, it worked because we we're both on the same page yeah. completely. Yeah. And you would have, the only way that could yeah. work is if you yeah. were both on the same yeah. page. But it wasn't just the girls, you know, my girlfriends that found that uncomfortable. It was boys on Jared's side, you know, cause they're all macho men and they're territorial and it's all right for him to do what he's doing. But then a few would hear, you know, or see me out in Melbourne and be like, you know, get on their high horse. Really? Or so, what are you doing? And I'm like, mind your own business. Yeah, we've got our own thing going we're, on. We're going fine, thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then he, when he moved back? It was just like, we we're back to complete normal. And then it was, this is, it's just us now. Yeah, and I was pregnant in six months. Oh! <gasps> yeah. <laughs> so. Was it a shock when you fell pregnant? Yes. Yeah. Because also not having had your period for 18 yep. months. Yeah. I did get a period and obviously that meant my cycle had started going and then I was pregnant the next month. So did you plan, Bobby? Well, it was a case of, I haven't had a period for nearly two years. I've got one now. Let's give it a crack. I didn't know anything about ovulating dates because my cycle was so, yeah, right. you know, crazy. So I didn't know when to do it. We just sort of winged it because I said, this could be the last chance for another two years or it yeah. could go five years or I could never get it again. So we thought if it happens, it happens. That's going to be amazing. If it doesn't, it's not meant to be. And it happened. And you were 22 at that time. Yeah. Yep. And he was 21? Yes, he was 21. So when you told your parents this, are they like, yep. you're fucking mad? No, they, they knew that that's what we wanted and my family have adored Jared from the get-go. Great. 
So I remember my dad, we were sitting at the kitchen bench and my dad was making a coffee. We were behind him, I said, Dad, guess what? And he's, what? And Jim turned around, I said, I'm having a baby. And he turned around to me and he goes, are you? Cool. And goes back to making his coffee. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is so, because when I was 22, I was like, so not in the headspace yeah. of that. Like I was trying to get into nightclubs yeah. and I'd get no, and I'd have to do <laughs> members night only girls. Yeah. Like I was always <laughs> trying to get into the footy players clubs, the yeah. like, ugly little thing rocking up, not members night only. <laughs> That was when I was 22. Yeah, but that's most 22 year olds, but that's just where I'm, I'm a bit different. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And to find somebody that is on the same page yeah. as you. And is that's amazing. why Jared and I have just always worked, regardless of our situation, our dynamics. And we've just always been on the same page. We're just so honest with each other. Um, yeah, and I just think that's a huge part of oh it. Oh my God, it's yeah. everything. It's yeah. so much of it. Yeah. Um, do you think, also, I do notice that AFL players, all seem to have families a lot younger. Yeah. Do you notice that? Yeah, it has been a common trend actually from a lot of our friends that were at the football club that Jared was at, there's babies sort of popping up all the time. Um, I don't know if it's, maybe it's something to do with financial security. I, I don't re know. I reckon it must be. Yeah, the, I think it would be because that's, the, you know, that's a huge, it is a huge factor. Yeah, totally. And also children. maybe because there's, it's such a structured Or they're lifestyle. trying to lock down these boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally, it could be a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so then when you found out you were pregnant with Bobby, yep. what was that like when you got that saying, okay? Obviously happening? there was a bit of like, holy shit, like, wow. You know, I, but at the same time I'd wanted it for so long. Like I longed for the day I would get a positive pregnancy test. So when it happened, it, you know, it wasn't like me and Jared, what do we do? It was just like, I'm pregnant. And there was never any discussion of anything else other than, oh my God, we're having a baby. Wow. You know, and I think being 22 and finding out you're pregnant, a lot of people said, oh, you know, how was Jared when you found yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, fucking fine, thank yeah. you. <laughs> he was really excited. But being 21 and a young boy, it's yeah. understandable that that's what people would think.